Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight we're going to have a unique class, so I hope that you enjoy it. And all I can tell you is get your pencils ready, get your colored pencils ready, uh, grab that uh, heating pad and maybe a cookie sheet. I'm going to show you a little trick to make colored penciling a little more malleable. So stick around here. All right, so it looks like Laurel is in chat here with me. So welcome, Laurel. Hopefully you have a heating pad and a cookie sheet. If you don't, that's just fine. We will uh, have fun regardless. So tonight's uh, class is gonna be all about donuts and I'm just gonna switch my camera view here really quick. Um, of course, if you know me, you, you know this about me, but you can see here if my camera will work. Bear with me here. I have a different camera set up this evening. You can see I have a thing for donuts. So I have these little felted donuts that are really fun that I make. And uh, so I have a thing for donuts. And you can see um, this amazing wood panel. I'm excited to get to use this guy. Uh, I'm going to do some acrylic painting on these uh, just because I love donuts. Okay, so it's taking my camera a moment here. We may not use that camera very much, but I thought it was worth using. I wanna show you this drawing board that I have. And so bear with me here. I got this a few years ago and um, it was a pretty expensive drawing board. And what it does is it heats up and it allows you to draw on it and it melts the wax of your pencil. Super cool, really handy. It allows you to kind of burnish or blend your colored pencils in a unique way. So I'm gonna switch to my other camera here and we'll kind of take a look at this. I'm gonna hold this up a little bit here, see if we can focus. So you can see that this is a glass board. On the side here, it has a it has a heat uh, gauge here, as well as um, a power button there. And right now all you can see is the glass, but what you do is we have this warm area and then a cool area so you can take your drawing from one area to the next area. So you can heat it up and cool it off and heat it up. Uh, if you don't have one of these, which the majority of people don't have, this is called an Icarus drawing board you can improvise and I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm just going to move this guy out of the way. He's also pretty heavy but has a good drawing surface. So you can see if you have a baking sheet and a heating pad. Uh, the cool thing about heating pads is they have variable speeds, or I mean not variable speeds, variable temperatures. I'm going to put mine on medium for now. And when you're doing this, you want to be really careful that you do not actually uh, have water or something that you could tip over that could create a little electric shock for you. You certainly don't want that. But what will happen is this surface will heat up and uh, you'll be able to melt the wax in your drawing. So I'm going to get out a piece of paper here. And the reason I really like donuts is that you can actually choose any kind of color palette that you want and you know have a lot of fun with it they're really fun they're festive so whatever colors you want to use tonight that is up to you so i guess we need to go through a few things here if you're just tuning in we're drawing a donut this class will probably last about an hour uh, if you want to check out more about our classes here, you can go to my calendar schedule. And if you have questions, please throw them in chat and let me know you're here and say hello. 
Again, tonight I'm just using Prismacolor colored pencils. I suggest using what you have and see how this works for you. Now, if you're, these pencils are wax based, so they'll work in this technique really well. And so if your pencils are wax based, that should work well. And I think we can get to draw, drawing. Okay, so what I have done here is I've actually drawn a donut with a bite out of it and just really quickly kind of sketch the circle round shape with your center hole here. And then you can kind of sketch in your, your bite here. Looks like I may have lost Laurel. Uh, but we'll just keep kind of going here. If you're just tuning in and you're uh, tuning in after the live stream, hopefully you will enjoy this class too. You can see I have a kneaded eraser here. So. And then what I do is I just kind of sketch out my icing and you know kind of have it go over the sides and like it's slopped on there so you can see some of the donut underneath you don't have to be too symmetrical if you don't want to be And I do the same on the inside too. And then what I'll do is I'll erase out kind of this area, this round area where the bite was. And what I've seen folks do, so we don't mix our graphite with our colored pencil too much, is I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser. You can get these really inexpensively at any kind of art store. They'll be with your pencils and sketching tools. You kind of roll it into a long tube and then you can just kind of roll it over your drawing to pick up any extra graphite and maybe um, I mean, that's pretty light. I'll zoom in here a little bit. And I can kind of slowly feel my uh, cookie sheet heating up. Uh, and I'm going to start with the donut part itself. So what I kind of do is I take several colors that are similar. You can see these three colors, they're kind of the color of the dough part here. And I start with the light one first. So, and also you're gonna wanna keep your pencil sharpener handy. And we'll see here if we can get another camera view so you can See, it might just take a second for it to kick in here. There we go, it's just slow. Okay, so you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm feeling this warming up. I'm gonna start sketching with my light. And I'm just lightly sketching in this donut dough area. Let's see here. And you know, if you need to sharpen your pencil, go ahead and do that.
because it really helps make your drawings better truly by having that sharp point. I have this great electric or battery operated pencil sharpener and you get a nice really good point out of that. And I find with colored pencils even more so it's more important So because I'm on this cookie sheet and it's heating up here, I turned it up to high here and I can really start feeling the warmth there. It doesn't have to be super hot to work, but just that little added warmth can really help fill in the crevices of your paper. Now I'm just lightly putting this in here because there is a such thing as having too much colored pencil together and if I just Put a light layer of this color in there. I don't worry about getting chalkiness there. Also, if you have a brush of some sort, it can be a paintbrush, you can kind of uh, wipe off excess lead or wax that kind of sheds as you're coloring. And it's kind of handy, so you're not dragging your hand across those leftovers, so to speak. The one thing that I didn't do is I didn't put my icing on here. So I actually am going to do that. Let's see. So if I make my icing kind of this brown color, I can just sketch it with this um, pencil. You could sketch it with your other pencil too. I'm gonna extend it out here. If at any point you feel like uh, your wax is melting too quickly or this is getting a little too warm for you, you can turn it off or just slide this over on your desk and you can bring it back when you, when you need it or want it. this so if you are just tuning in pop in chat and say hello uh, what I'm using right now is a heating pad and a cookie sheet with the heating pad on uh, to warm the wax of my colored pencil and it really does a nice job of allowing you to blend really nicely. So I'm going to start. So I started with my light color here. I'm going to start with another light color in the icing. I'm using this light pink. You can use any color that you want. It's entirely up to you. This is just so I can get down the foundation and I'm lightly sketching here. Now, if you don't, if you don't have a cookie sheet and a heating pad, do not worry. You don't have to have one to create uh, a really nice colored pencil drawing. The nice thing about using the heat is that it allows you to work a little less hard. You don't have to press as hard. And, you know, I'm not pressing hard right now, but sometimes when you are trying to blend you really are pressing really hard and 
the heat allows you a little bit of leeway, so you don't have to do that. So I, I think it was this week. It seems like my time is just going so fast this week, but we had National Donut Day, and I thought, what better than a donut? Because you can really uh, put some personality into it. Now, if you want to add sprinkles, you can do that as well. You may want to sketch those out. I just have icing right here for this one, but as you can see, we've got some sprinkles there. Okay. So really what I'm doing, these are what I call local colors. You're laying down the local color, the base color, and then you're going to add um, shadows and utilize the light areas to create light. You can also use white. Um, sometimes, as you can see, I'm just going to zoom in here. See if you can get this focus a little better. There we go. So I used white here on top after I'd already drawn this. So you can use white on top. Uh, but sometimes if you reserve the light colors, um, it makes it work a little better. Or you can use your handy dandy uh, battery powered eraser to pull out color. It does a pretty nice job on colored pencil. So this is definitely an important tool to have when you're working with colored pencils in this way. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm going a step up for my pink. So this is gonna be a little bit uh, darker than this light pink. And you, if you have another piece of paper that you wanna test it out on, that's always a good rule of thumb, whether you're painting or you're sketching, you know, until you're really familiar with working with these tools. It doesn't hurt to experiment. So kind of my goal here is to have a lighter color of pink on top and where the icing forms away from the light, we're gonna have a little more shadow. So just kind of around the edges, I'm gonna start in with this pink color. Gonna zoom in here a little. And I just try to make it kind of follow uniformly uh, along the edges there. So we just started watching this show that Laurel recommended. Um, I couldn't even tell you. I think it's on Netflix maybe uh, where it's a glass blowing show. It's kind of like the Great British Bake Off but with blown glass. It is really interesting and incredible what they can do uh, with blown glass. So, uh, right, uh, this heating pad and the cookie sheet, it's really, I mean, it's pretty interesting to utilize here as well as the drawing board, but the drawing board is very expensive and uh, not everybody is gonna wanna shell out, you know, some money for it. And I don't know, honestly, if I looked on her website, 
and I didn't see where she's, she has a painting board up there, but I didn't see the drawing board available on her website. Her name is Esther Roy, and she's developed this board. She's very talented and uses, um, she, I mean, go check out her website. She's so talented. She uses colored pencils. It's also great for um, oil pastels or wax crayons, anything like that. Give it a whirl and see how you like it. Uh, I use the drawing board admittedly often. This is my first go really with this other technique, but honestly it works just as well. And you probably already have these items in your house. So I'm happy that you, uh, you're learning something new through this class and uh, I'm glad you're tuning in tonight. So thanks for hanging out. So, and you see like uh, oftentimes you can blend with this colorless blender, but sometimes if you use it and want to color on top of it, I find it kind of problematic. So um, I, I really like this other technique where you can kind of melt your crayons or your wax, so to speak, to blend. And again, I'm just lightly coloring in with this colored pencil. I will definitely get to what I call kind of burnishing it here later. But you'll definitely, if you are subject to heating up, <laughs> if drinking hot drinks kind of mix, you start to sweat. This is definitely going to make you sweat too. So you're, you've been warned about that. <laughs> so again, I'm going to add this kind of darker shade in here, in this inner portion. Okay, so I'm feeling like that's good with the pink. Oh, I'm going to go back in with some very vibrant colors and know that you can go as far as you want with this. You don't have to, I mean, you could stop here if you wanted to. I like to kind of push the color a little bit. So that is what I'm going to do. So I laid down, I think I laid down this yellow color first. I think that's right. I guess we'll find out. Actually, no, I think I laid down this color. So I'm going to go in with this. It is some sort of ochre, but you can kind of see. Let's see if we can zoom in here. It's kind of a nice, it's not quite a burnt sienna, but it's kind of close. And I'm just going to do that on the outside here. I'm pressing a little harder for this. You can also make this kind of a shadow underneath your icing if you want to. So, because don't forget icing, I mean, there's always shadows. So, and that's what really can make a piece is your light and shadow. So you can see this is starting to look a little dimensional. Of course, we're gonna have a shadow in here as well, like you can see here, it is here. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, kind of have a better idea of what's happening. And you could actually, I mean, at this point, you could go in with this color again, the first color. You can kind of burnish them into one another. Uh, I may have actually used this color. But you can see how nicely they blend. And it really starts feeling dimensional here. So if you're a person who really likes color, you may not um, you may not be a painter just yet, or you're, you're, you feel a little uncomfortable with that, or you're just learning to paint. This is a great way to be able to play with color and kind of get comfortable with it. before you get to painting. So again, I'm just shading here. I'm pressing a little bit harder now as I'm going along and I'm blending in. So I'm blending right into this other color and you can see it just really blends in nicely. Now, if you were probably done with this area, you could even blend more with this colorless blender it kind of moves that wax around and it will fill in areas that you might feel are untouched by the color pencil. I'm just going to keep moving around and you can kind of see where we're going here. We're going to be doing this with the pink, pink colors as well. And the reason I like to start light is because I don't want to have like a ton of pigment on there and then have it just become a mess because sometimes that will happen with colored pencil. You can kind of layer like you might in watercolor a little. And I will say that I saw this great tip about the cookie sheet on a forum because I was really, when I first started looking for my uh, information about this Icarus drawing board, um, you know, it was a little hard to find information about it. But I did find, you know, some alternatives, too, for folks who weren't very interested in spending the money for it. So OK, so our donut is really looking quite donut-y. We're doing pretty good for time. So I'm going to go in with in my pink area, I'm going to add some darker, more vibrant colors. You can do uh, this with anything. So just to remind you, if you're just tuning in, I use this rose pink. This is a Derwent color. I have a few of these that I've collected from my husband. He gave them to me. So this is a rose pink. It's a real that really light pink color. And then I went over it with this pink Prisma color. And now I'm probably going to be working in a magenta and this carmine red. Uh, again, you know, it's always good to test your colors to see what they look like because they don't always match their outsides. I really like 
this carmine red to give it a little bit of oomph. So I'm going to start in with it and really start kind of enriching this a little bit. I feel like I need to play some music for you guys. Need a little pep in our drawing class. And I'm putting a little more pressure into this. Again, I'm doing this approach very similar to what we've done already. And don't forget, you know, your icing is going to have a shadow too. So you'd sort of need to decide which way your light is going. Where's my regular pencil? And as a reminder, sometimes, you know, you just need to do a little arrow on your drawing that says the sun is coming from this way. So anything that's facing this area, like on this side, it's going to be lighter and you're going to have shadows on this side just to keep you so you know where where your light and shadows are going to be. And I'm kind of doing this, I'm leaving some room down here to add a darker color. You can always work back and forth with with your pinks and whatnot. So if I like in this area here, if I wanted to go back in with my pink, I can easily then kind of burnish into this color. But for now, I'm going to just keep moving around. Kind of adding a little bit of a shadow here. You can use a different color as well, but kind of see how this starts to look. And again, the harder you press, the darker your color will be, especially if you're heating it like I am on this heating pad. It'll be nice and rich. Again, just a disclaimer, you don't want to have anything water or anything nearby that you could knock over and knock onto your work or your heating pad. You don't want your, your world lit up. And when you're kind of burnishing with your pencil, of course, you're going to have wax. Just brush it to the side. I'm using this page paper here, so I'm not dragging my hand around here because it definitely happens and can happen. Again, don't be afraid to sharpen your pencil if you need to. See how nice and sharp that is. If you need to define your edges a little bit more, you can do that too. With a really nice sharp pencil it makes a big difference. So this is really nice. I might uh, go back in and continue to work the center area until I'm happy with it like this. But we're going to move in. Let's see. It is the same color. 
So one is process red and one is magenta. Again, I can use my little scrap of paper and see which one of these I like better. The process red, I think, is more like a pink. So this is magenta. This is process red. I'll probably use both of these. So first we'll start with this kind of, this process red color. It's sort of a pinky, rosy color. And I can lightly work it in here. I really love to be able to play with color and Sometimes the colors you may not think like a, a rosy red color and this pinky color. But you're going to see that a lot with flowers. Just different shades of a rose color. And then if I wanted to, I could take this magenta color And you can see, let's zoom in here, how it's creating this nice kind of form shadow. So that's what it'll look like when I get there. So I'm just kind of working this in to that red color. And sometimes when you swirl it around, 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 it gives you really nice coverage that way. And blends, so kind of little circles with your pencil. You can turn your drawing too if you need to. If you're just tuning in, hello and welcome. Tonight we are using heat with our colored pencils. And using it to blend them a little more easily together. Uh, I should mention too that I'm using Bristol paper. You can find this in your local craft store generally and uh, I like it for colored pencil. I, I get it in a pad of paper and get several drawings out of it if you want. So we put down our local color, now we're putting down some shading colors. And it looks like I forgot to put a little of this color in here. So you can work back and forth with these colors.
Okay, and then I'm gonna hit this with my magenta. It's a little bit darker. You could also use a really dark purple. Let's see if I have one over here for some darker areas. This is a really nice, this is mulberry. So it's kind of on the pinky side too, purple. And then I have a really nice one that is a black cherry if I can find it. That's really dark. This one, black cherry. Oops, too many things in my hand. And this one is a really deep purple. So you could use this for some of your shading areas and we'll use it tonight just so you can kind of see how it looks here. I'm just gonna go around the very edges, clean up some of these edges. I see some areas that I missed. I kind of usually have multiple uh, pencils in my hand while I'm working. <laughs> not unusual. What did I do with those? Let's see. We'll kind of see what we can get here. So just like this, you know, I'm using multiple. Pencils kind of working back and forth. So what questions do you have for me if you've been tuned in for a while? I know uh, Laurel has been having some internet issues. But if you've been following for a little bit, maybe you have questions. If you don't have a ton of colored pencils, you certainly don't have to work in this way. You can use uh, pressure to vary the darkness and vibrancy of your colored pencils too. So you know, over the years you kind of as an artist, you go back and forth between mediums and uh, you collect things and then you wind up with a ton of colored pencils or something. And then you have lots of great colors. So what I'm doing is I'm just going back in with this hot pink color, or actually it's just a pink color. It's not a hot pink color and blending into the red and spots where I want to, because now that light pink, you know, it's sort of disappeared because everything else is so vibrant. So you could fill in as much as you want. Compress a little harder and blend into your other colors or burnish as I like to say. I can even go back in with my light pink wherever it went. And again, you can use this blending tool, but I kind of save it for last sometimes, or if I have a tricky area, that just isn't blending. You can kind of see how, how that works. Let's zoom in a little bit here. 
So again, this is a colorless blender. I don't always like how it leaves uh, my drawing, so I don't try to, I try not to overuse it. So this is my black cherry color where I could go in and add, you know, some definition and shadows if I wanted to. You want to push some of those shadows a little bit, you can totally do that with this. Got to remember where my light's coming from. Got this all turned around. So my light's coming from this way. But it starts really taking shape, right? So these are pretty light areas. That might be how the light falls. I didn't actually use a reference for this, just kind of um, used you know, imagination for this guy. And basically what we've been doing with these other portions of this donut, we can do with our frosting here as well. So we're gonna make our frosting kind of a brown color too. Maybe it's a chocolate frosting of this um, ochre color. So I will just lightly sketch it in here. Now you could do one of two things, much like, oops, much like watercolor, you can preserve the white. So if you, you could draw around a white area if you want to create a highlight there. Uh, or you can go over it with your white pencil or use your eraser. I think I'm just going to sketch in and I'll show you kind of the difference between using a white pencil and the eraser. So I'm just going to do one even coat of this local color. And the local color is the color that the object is normally. So maybe this is like a, a maple kind of frosting, maybe. So you can kind of see that local color. You could use this color or a little bit darker color to, let's see, you can't see that. This color or a darker color to create a little more dimension and shading there. I'm gonna use this terracotta color. I'm gonna sharpen this. And because my light is coming from this direction, my form shadow would be over here, so it's gonna be a little bit darker. So I can kind of burnish in this side. And again, a form shadow is that which um, shifts away from the light. If you need to define your area, you can do that a little bit.
And again, if you have questions or there are certain things that you'd like to see pertaining to art or using paint or colored pencils, you can let me know. It looks like I didn't plug my computer in, of course. So bear with me here in just a moment. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we can either go in with a darker brown, which I have a darker brown here. And let's see. Always able to test before we commit, because it is hard to remove color. Uh, once you've laid it down, unless you have, you know, battery operated eraser. I think I might actually go in with a, this is a golden rod. We'll kind of see how this looks. I would also recommend as you are, you know, embarking on your art journey, not to be afraid to experiment. You know, the worst that could happen is that you don't love the piece that you drew, but you know, you're always gonna learn something during the journey. Actually, that's not the color I want. Where did I go? Here it is. So don't be afraid to try colors together. You know, don't be afraid to use an old cookie sheet if you need to. You know, and as you're heating up these uh, colors and you kind of burnish into one another, it really can create a seamless, rich, color experience. There's a great artist that you should check out if you're really into colored pencils. I think her name is Morgan Davison or Davidson. I should look her up for you here. Hang on here. She is phenomenal and uh, I think she's relatively young. Not that that makes any difference, but Davidson. So this is her and her work is incredible. All colored pencil. So go check her out if you're on Instagram or, you know, on the web. She might really be very inspiring for you. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I need a little more contrast, I feel. And so I'm gonna go in with this darker brown. And this, uh, it's just dark umber. And you can kind of 
see it gives it a little more definition. I can clean up some of these edges a little. And I have some areas here that are, they have some light spots. So if you don't want to go darker, you can always try to go back in with your, that particular color. Or you can use your colorless blender if you're not wanting to add, necessarily add more color. So what does that mean? You can kind of, just does a nice job sometimes cleaning up these little white areas that are left. Especially if you're not, if you're done with that area and you think you're not going to go back in. You could even do that in some of these areas if you wanted. I might sharpen this a little. So thanks, Laurel. I'm sorry that you uh, your internet was ha you're having issues with your internet, but this is a great activity. You know, uh, what I love about this too is this would be a great activity to, if you don't like donuts, if you're a little bit healthier, you could get a fruit and, uh, you know, draw a fruit, like a tomato or an apple, or, you know, if you think tomatoes are, tomatoes are fruit. So uh, you could actually do an egg. Eggs are always kind of fun to draw or paint. So you notice here that I don't have uh, sprinkles on this guy. But if you want to put sprinkles on your donut, have adder. That's what's kind of fun about donuts is they have lots of personality. There are lots of varieties. Now, you know, there are gourmet donut shops. And you could keep working this. Um, I'm probably not going to so much keep working it, but I am going to add a shadow. Let me zoom out here. So it looks like it's sitting on the table. And I used a couple of different grays to do this. You could use one color of gray. There are warm grays in Prismacolor and there are cool grays. And I think I'm going to use this 20% cool gray because we've got lots of warmth in this. I'm going to sharpen this. Maybe. The one thing that I, you know, what can happen is if your lead breaks in your pencil, then you can sharpen it and part of it comes out. I think that sometimes happens when these are old as well. But I think my light's coming this from this direction. So I think I'd have a shadow here and I'd have one over here. So I'm just going to lightly... Kind of go back and forth here and put this little shadow in here. The other thing that you can do with colored pencils that I didn't do so much with this drawing, but that you can do is I like to sometimes just have a really sharp pencil and have marks in there. Hopefully you can see that little hash marks kind of that give it a little bit of character and makes it really feel like a drawing, you know, as well. And then kind of for the shadow, I'm just going to lightly see how am I going to do that? You can kind of lightly sketch how you think that shadow is going to, fall 
do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is your drawing. But I always feel like things really look more realistic. They look grounded when you're able to just get that shadow in there. For a lot of years, I think I just had things were floating and it's something that I like to have now. Probably some art teacher gave me that advice and I just stick to it. So I have this other color that is a slate gray. It's kind of like a blue, blue color. But I'm gonna go closer in here. I'm lightly putting this in. You could use any kind of, you know, dark color that you wanted to. You could use like that dark cherry color. It's quite a bit darker than this one. And this cast shadow would be closer and harder edged. You definitely could go darker here, but for my purposes, this is gonna work just fine. And I can't forget, I'm, I was going to show you how to use white as well because you can use white over the top. Sometimes it can get tricky. May not always kind of look how you want it to look. Of course, your white's going to look much better in a darker or more concentrated area. So if you've got really shiny donuts glaze, you know, you're going to have some highlights. Now you can see this doesn't get super white. Um, I think part of that is because it's just wax on wax and I, I don't know. So this is what it looks like when you're using the white pencil. Because you're going to have some highlights here. And I'm pressing pretty hard with this guy. But you can also take your powered eraser, and I think this is one of the best things that you can get for colored pencil if you decide that colored pencil is your thing. You can have thinner erasers that go, that are interchangeable. I think this pulls out, um, and then you can just put one in. But I always kind of try to catch the side of my eraser. And you can see that's going to give you a kind of a better highlight than uh, your white pencil. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's see. Say you're not super happy with that shape. You can go back in with your colored pencil and you can reshape that erasure to create the shape that you want or to highlight that a little bit. So So you can kind of see the difference there. You could even do this underneath your white pencil, but you can see the difference there. So that feels like a donut. I always feel like the highlight is the thing that makes the donut for me when I'm painting or drawing it. So, and there are always more fun, I think, to do. When you're drawing these things so 
there you have it. Uh, let's see, did we stay within our hour? We did pretty good for time. Uh, so I hope that you got a lot out of this. I'm gonna switch my camera here real quick. So thank, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me. If you want to learn more about me and my art, you can go check out IHaveGumption.com and you can see more of my work there. I work digitally and, and uh, with paint and all that jazz. And I have lots of videos on this channel if you're just starting your journey that you can go check out and uh, that are free. So check them out. Also, if you uh, want to support me, I do have a Patreon channel. It's very, very small. And I'm really grateful for my patrons who help make this possible. Without them, you know, it makes it a lot easier to do videos for you. And so thanks, Colin and Laurel. And uh, awesome. I hope that you have a great rest of your week. I hope that you had fun today drawing with me. And if you actually uh, do any kind of social media and you want to share your artwork on social media, you can do that. You can find me at here. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. So thanks, Laurel. I appreciate you tuning in and I will see you guys. Oops. I don't know how to work this thing. I will see you guys next time. So take care. See you later. <laughs>